Brazil is an interesting case because it, it, while I have very little respect for the president of Brazil, Bo Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro, I think uh, uh, you call it, uh, he has appointed an economy czar, you could call him, an economy czar, uh, Paulo Goetz. And, uh, and uh, Paulo Goetz is a real free marketer. I mean, he's a free, marketer, free market economist who really wants to privatize much of the Brazilian industry that is today nationalized. He would like to privatize the whole industry, but Bolsonaro has said he will not. Um, and who is a, who is a true, true free marketer. So, and this guy, Paulo Guedes, has appointed to a bunch of the economic ministries, he has appointed uh, free market economists. So people from free market think tanks all over Brazil. So I am cautiously optimistic about Brazil. If Bolsonaro, who I think is a nothing and, and, and from all accounts a thug, if Bolsonaro can keep his hands off from the economists, and of course there's a precedent for this. The precedent is Chile in the 1980s. In 1979, I think it was, uh, Chile, had, in 1974, uh, Pinochet uh, in a military coup uh, took over the government from a, um, from a uh, socialist from a socialist government that was going to nationalize everything, was starting to nationalize everything and destroy Chile. And Chile at the time was the poorest country in Latin America. And uh, Pinochet took it over. Uh, he was a, he was a, I can't remember if he was a general or a colonel, but he was from the army. And I think it was a general Pinochet. And by 1979, five years later, Chile was poorer. Uh, Chile was doing awful economically. And Pinochet was desperate. And he looked around for some different ideas, for some different people, people who were willing to take the risk of taking, in a sense, control over the Chilean economy. And he found a group of young economists who had been trade, trained at the University of Chicago under Milton Friedman. And he basically handed the Chilean economy to them. He gave them carte blanche. He gave them full authority to basically do what they wanted with the Chilean economy. It was not Milton Friedman, it was people trained by Milton Friedman. They were called the Chicago Boys, they've come to be known as the Chicago Boys, and indeed they did. And they turned Chile into the freest economy in Latin America, they turned Chile into the, one of the freest economies in the world, they turned Chile into the richest country on a per capita GDP basis in Latin America. They, you know, it was an, an amazing turnaround, and at some point Pinochet, he was pretty cocky and pretty, uh, pretty uh, convinced that the, because of all this, the, the, the Chilean people would want him to continue, in a sense, as, as dictator. And he agreed to have a referendum about whether he should continue or whether they should have democratic elections. And he lost the referendum. And he stepped aside. And he transitioned to a democracy. Now, Pinochet was a bad guy. A lot, thousands and thousands and thousands of Chileans died. He did horrible things, torture and murder and awful stuff. Awful stuff, right? But, but, he, he made Chile a, a much, much better place. Dramatically so. The best place to live today in Latin America. The best place to live in the last 20 or 30 years in Latin America. So he revolutionized completely Chile. So net, was he good or good? Was he positive? I, I, I'm not going to say. I think, I, think, I think, how do you measure the, the, the incredible economic success of Chile? How do you measure that v as compared to the lives of the people he killed, right? So I, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to say that he was a net positive, but the Chilean economy is the wealthiest economy in Latin America. It's got a long way to go still, and I think if they continue liberalizing and continue privatizing, they could become even richer. It's one of the few countries in the world that has a private social security. The Chilean people were, were given an, a, a choice between keeping their money in the national social security and the government-run social security system or it, putting it into private accounts. 99% of them put it into private accounts. So while he was a thug, while he was brutal, he changed Chile for the better, ultimately, and generations of Chileans will benefit from that. Was it worth the death of 3,000 people? No. It never is. 
but it was a word, but that is the facts. That is, that is the reality in which we live. Chile is today the most capitalist, freest economy in Latin America. All right, it's called the Chilean miracle, and it's, 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 it's truly amazing. And if Bolsonaro will do the same thing, and I think because, you know, I don't think Bolsonaro is going to kill people. I don't think we're going to see the slaughter. I don't think we're going to see missing people. At least I hope not. Uh, but if, if we can see the, the liberal, the liberal in a positive sense, liberal in the pro-free market sense, liberal in the pro-free individual, individual rights sense, if we can see those forces in Brazil rise, if we can see the equivalent of the Chicago boys take over the economy and actually do the stuff, not just talk about it, but actually do it, and if Bolsonaro lets them do it, Brazil is a much bigger country than Chile. Brazil is a country of 200 million people. It, it could revolutionize Latin America. It could revolutionize the world. It could really change everything. It's a country to watch. People are optimistic. That's why the Brazilian stock exchange at the end of last year was the most profitable stock exchange in the world because in the anticipation of this shift. But I think, I think it could be a very, 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 um, very exciting thing and, um, to watch. Um, I, you know, uh, uh, I know, so, uh, yeah, I'm optimistic about Brazil, but cautiously optimistic because I know the downfalls. All right.